Hello everybody, today I'm going to do children's most favorite fish Nemo as three-dimensional cake. So because of its really roundish, sort of very characteristic, very kind of characteristic shape, it will be quite easy to do. But having said that, we have to give a lot of attention to simple characteristics. Otherwise we end up in an orange fish with the white pyjama lines uh, instead of Nemo himself. So that's why we have to be very careful. So what is, what are all those characteristics? First of all, the color very bright orange, so I like this color more. I just get this mid-tone here. I'm gonna do the whole lot in one, one uh, color without worry about different tones on it. So, uh, for example, the eyes are very puffy, cheeks are very puffy, and then the eyes are round, but not complete round, so you have to follow exactly this shape, a bit like sort of a bit more almond shape, and then uh, the pupil is like a, a very clean round piece, uh, same color as the body, but a bit of like a dark, uh, darker toned uh, sort of like shadings on it. One, two little dots, white dots make the shine perfect. And then the fins are one large, one small. If the fins both sides are the same size, that will be look like its father. So um, the pyjama lines, that the white lines, has a frame around with the black line. It's also a bit of disturbed, not exactly clean black line. So this is, I will also do very careful with that. So um, then it has got a smile with the teeth in front. So that's why I'm going to do this shape here. So also what is important is the, the shape of the body. So when I look at the, the face in the front, uh, it's like a larger at the bottom, lo uh, smaller on the top. So it's actually like a pear shape. It's a, it's a rectangular shape. So I take this most reliable, most reliable shape it, to my planning to carry it here. So I start from this drawing, I look at the height, I put it over here, so I make it the side view is correct, then I take the width and I put it over here, so then I have my top view. So I have front, side and top view, I have enough to continue. I can trust my eyes to look at it and then shape my cake correctly, but I will not trust my teachings if I don't have templates. So that's why I will produce also templates when I'm carving the cake to show you exactly what to do. So I have another picture over here, which is, uh, give me some ideas, what can I do other than the fish on the board? So uh, that gives me some sort of like colorful corals that I can do. I can do some flat green pieces overlapping on, on top of each other. That gives me sort of like nice underwater scenery. So I will follow all those things with you together. So I'm gonna clear now and bring all the tools and material, recipes and ingredients to show you what you need all together. Uh, to start doing this cake. So I recommend you to watch the whole video and get ready all your tools and necessary things before you start following me step by step. So these are all the things that what we need to make this cake. So let's start from the uh, fondant. This is Vision, which I like it very much. I end up putting my face on it. So I like it so much because of this couple of reasons. Most important is it has got a very good stretch, so if I have to coat some high cake or something like complicated, I have to push the fondant into deeper areas without getting any so much sort of like a crack and stretch and everything. So that will give me that achievement. Another thing is if I have something uh, more complicated, which I need to have more time to work on this cake, it also gives me that time without getting also hard surface that I can give details on the surface also. So. It works for me very well, but if you have something that which you used to work with and you're happy with that, of course, I cannot just uh, tell you that this is the only one you have to use. Okay, now, um, I have here a variation of this uh, paste, that which is uh, fondant, pastillage and gum paste and everything. These are all the colors that it is actually quite matching to that environment here. So, um, and uh, some of them pastelier, some of them sort of gum paste and fondant. This is fondant, I mix it together. So it is not important at the moment what I'm going to tell you because that cake is not finished yet. So I don't know how much I'm going to use it. So, but at this moment, when you're watching this video, you will have a list underneath this video, will give you exact detail of how much I need. Is it pastillage or gum paste or what color, everything. Just please follow that one instead of just listening what I'm saying. So what do I have over here? Orange, white pastillage, pink fondant, purple fondant, burgundy fondant, black fondant, pastillage, light brown, pastillage, early green, and then all those, all those guys here to I will do it. And then I have also dark blue that I'm going to put it underneath the fish, so be sort of like a base color. These are all the things. So I have here a nicely conditioned ganache. 
It is a little bit harder now. I may put back to the microwave when I'm doing the cake. So recipe is in the recipe section of yenersway.com. And here is the, I have two sponge, which is 25 centimeter wide and five centimeter height. These two will be more than enough. Each of them 1.2 kilo mud cake mixture. The recipe also available in the yenersway.com recipe sections. All right, now tools and material. I have here a board 45 by 45 square coated with purple velvet because you see that background here, which I like it. I like to have this one without icing. Just want to have it that only with the achieving with the uh, velvet here. So uh, when the cake is finished, that protection line on it, which is a cellophane sheet, will be removed only outer than the cake, the area. So the cake is not touching to the board, to the cloth, only that the outside will be removed. We have a very clean, nice surface, will be nice finishing. So everything else is like very common things like uh, starch and then like uh, poking needles and then uh, scissor brushes to, to use some black color to make these black lines around the pyjama lines. And I have some cellophane sheets over here to make some pipings. Very simple uh, modeling tools. I just pick up maybe some pushes in that, but this is more important. I will use probably fork more than anything else to get these lines done. Uh, plastic knife, PVC roll, I use always to roll my fondant most of the cases. Uh, fondant pusher, leveler, and then uh, some towels, wet and dry, I will make it. Two knives, one large, one small, and, um, and then some, of course, like uh, spatulas to make this uh, the ganache on the surface of the cake. So, uh, water spray, maybe I need, maybe don't. Uh, so, these are all the things that I need. Okay, so now is the time for clearing up and start carving the cake. So, I prepared already my templates. I used that file separator, plastic file separators. They are very nice, firm enough to keep it for the next cake. At the same time, semi-transparent, you can read exactly what's going on underneath and you can mark it with a uh, marking pen and after that, cut it nicely. So as you see, I cut slightly smaller because once the naked cake is finished, we will have crumb coat, we will have chocolate crust coat, we will have ganache coat before the final uh, fondant coating. So all those things makes a lot of Thicker, the cake that after the finish is a naked cake. So that's why I don't want to end up like bigger than Nemo. I just want to have an original Nemo size. That's why I cut slightly smaller. So I'm thinking about take the top uh, top view and then go twice exactly the same on it. So we will cover about that rectangular piece so we can already start putting something smaller on top and then carry on with the checking everything side view, top view, and we'll do the right thing. So we don't need that drawing anymore. I just want to put it on the side, all right. Maybe we just need these pictures more than that. Okay, just put it here. All right, we need that cling wrap later on, all right. I have here a platform. I mean hard platform. I'm going to build the cake on top here. So first one comes in here. I will use that rounded shape as a beginning. There we go. And I like to cut one more time. Use this one. This time I like to go the other side. It makes more sense. This cake is nice and moist. It has got a very good texture because 
once we have that uh, cake is naked cake finished we can still push it down a little bit it doesn't really bounce back all right this one here this one here this one we need later on okay Let's go. Ganesh. Don't put too much ganache in between. Otherwise, we'll be bulging out on the side. All right. This one comes here. Bit of ganache here. Okay, I want to turn it symmetrical to the board so I can see that correctness better. All right, so we will have in the height wise, we will have some more on top. So I like to get this one, maybe like this. Okay. like that just roughly you can always add more later on see how much is it not too bad okay Okay, now, now it's time to check a little bit more the actual shape. Okay. Obviously, we need a little bit more on the top. That should be good. Okay, a little bit here. A little bit here.
Okay, now I'm pretty happy for the stitch, so I'm going to start carving further. Just like a kebab. Just trim this off. When you're working mud cake and ganache, always a bit messy at the beginning. But the key is you have to clean as you go, then you'll be in much better in shape. So, as I said, a little bit as it is, I'm going to clean up and get back to you. While I'm cleaning around, I place the cake for five minutes in the fridge. It firms up a little bit, it helps to better carving. So, I continue carving the cake according to that drawings, according to that my templates. So, as you see, this is a kind of pear shape. So this is still not pear shape, it's just like egg shape. So I like to cut this accordingly. Okay, just one down here. Now, it's very important that we should not forget that Nemo has a, a special face. So, in order to get this special face, we have to do some additions on it. I'm not going to carve the complete details from the one cake, which is this cake. All right? I'm going to add some little paste on it. So, what I do, I'm just going to get this, all those mixed, all those uh, offcuts, put a bit of ganache inside, mixing to the cake paste so I can add, I can sculpture the face much better with that instead of just carving out, right? So that is already good enough. All right. So what we do, we take a little bit of ganache here just a teaspoon. Now mix this one, uh, whatever the offcuts are, into a paste. You can adjust your amount of ganache according to your uh, satisfactory sort of softness of this paste. All right. This is a very good idea to get some details on the cake. Most of the time for three-dimensional cakes, I do that. Look at that. This is just nice. Taste as good as the normal mud cake. All right. Let's go. Take a piece. Put it over here. You know, this fish has a very distinguished cheeks, very puffy cheeks on the side. Yeah. As soon as I add the cheeks, Nemo is coming out, showing off.
the eyes very important. Let me have several eye sockets here. is already good for the first for the first shaping all right Okay, now what I like to do, I'm going to give a little bit of crumb coat. Crumb coat means just make a very thin level of uh, ganache that sticks all the crumbs into the surface. Nothing much, just a little bit. You don't have to put too much crumb coat on that cake paste area because they are not really crumbly anyway. Okay? This area is not very really crumbly anyway. Okay, now next step is Now begin. Okay. Wait a lot. Yes, double check again one more time. Correct. Front view. No, it looks much better. All right. Now, so all what I have to do, I don't need this anymore. I take this cling film. Look at that. Now, the point of this putting cling film is when I 
use my two hands and just start pushing. Wherever it's just bumpy area, pushing into the rice, nice and round shape, all right? Just get rid of all those extra bumps, right? Okay, and then push the eye holes, like this. And then make sure it's the cheek. Cheeks are nice puffy. And also, um, now I like to put the mouth like that. Actually, the first shape of the mouth. We're going to do better than that later on. Just the first shape. That's it, that goes in the fridge. And now we're gonna clean up again. Okay, let's go further. As you realize, uh, it's now a cleaner board here because I removed my cling film and then fill up a little bit more, these little indentations and everything, a little bit more and touch up again and put my new cling film again. So let's do now the next step, which is the, after this, uh, the crumb coat, we're gonna do now crust coat with chocolate. So I'm using a little bit of compound chocolate uh, because compound chocolate, it doesn't have to be tempered, doesn't have a really much of like in, uh, attention should be given. So it will also, it doesn't give any kind of resistance to the knife when we cut in the cake. So it will just, I will just coat, it's very slightly the, the chocolate skin on it. What does it do if this cake stays in room temperature, quite a long time, and then the, the, let's say the cake becomes softer, because of that crust coat, it will maintain its shapes, all right? So uh, let's remove that first. All right. So I have a piece of little PVC uh, sheet over here, flexible. I'm gonna use this one for to coat the chocolate. So just dip a little bit like this and scrape it off. And then start from the bottom and then just go nice thin layers of chocolate on the surface. Look at that. Because the cake is nice and cold, immediately when I put the chocolate, it gets set. This uh, coating shouldn't be really perfect, but we have to be careful that we don't have much of like a bumps on it. So because the bumps will be difficult later on to make the last uh, ganache coating. The cross coat also, uh, as I explained just now, it's protect. Uh, the cake when the cake stays in a uh, warmer environment quite a long time. So uh, at the same time, what does it do when we, when we place the fondant on the surface? And then it gives a kind of like resistance when you, when we pushing with the fondant leveler, it, it has a kind of like opposite uh, strength that we can uh, make the fondant leveler nice and functional, all right? I'm not so sure what I'm saying is makes sense, but uh, you will see it when I'm doing it anyway. That method that I'm using the cake paste to make the details on the cake and also using the uh, chocolate uh, as a crust coat is pretty good things to do when you're doing three-dimensional cakes. Okay, now I want to be careful in the front here. I don't want to make too much chocolate in the mouth and, and sort of like the eyes area because I will be still pushing again when I place my the eyes on the right place. So I just make a nose 
a bit of chocolate, but the rest I don't worry about it. Okay. And it's just inside the mug, a little bit like that. Should be good. And maybe underneath the chin a little bit. Especially underneath the chin is quite important because there's a gap on it, so I don't want this to fall off. You know? That's it. Now, we're going to wait till the chocolate sets. Maybe I put another minute in the fridge. Then we're going to start giving a last uh, final ganache coat. Okay. Continue with the final ganache coating over the chocolate. Just use that small little palette knife like this. You can hear that how crispy is the chocolate underneath the glass ganache. Okay. Before I go to the face side, I just want to finish that part. I use the same scraper, the soft scraper I use for chocolate. Okay. It's done. So I'm not going to coat this again with a cling film. Just leave it like this in the fridge. And uh, I'm going to start now producing all my parts. Like we can do the eyes, for example, out of pastillage, let it nice and set. So when we're pushing after the uh, just to finish the coating with the orange uh, fondant, the eyes can just go inside the fondant, create that little gap around the eyes. So, um, so we can also put uh, the the fins. We're gonna get ready 
and uh, maybe just also start with the, all the other parts of the environment. So when we finish the cake, it's already just grabbed and placed on the right place so we can finish the cake quickly. So we deal with the sugar paste from now on. Okay, I already start with the ice and the fins. The reason why I did the ice first, because I like to use the ice uh, as pastillage and then when the cake is coated with the orange fondant, nice and soft, I can push that hard uh, pastillage into the fondant, it sink in like in this here original uh, Nemo. So it is puffing ice, but it still sink inside the, the skin. All right, and also the fins, uh, I need to have a bit of strength. So because the fondant is nice and soft to coat the cake, but when we come to the point that we have to make the fins, it will be just too soft to falling down. So that's why I take some of this orange fondant and add 10% icing sugar inside. So in the result that when you do this kind of things, in about one hour time, it was already standing up like this. You can just attach to the body and if touching somewhere like this around, it will be nice and firm. Uh, it is not gonna fall off. Just like this one too, see like it's standing. And then also back fins, as you see over here, uh, we can attach to the body and then position like this, it will also stay it's still soft. Uh, it will be uh, it will be a little bit more time time uh, passed before then we attaching it will be no problem at all. So I like to uh, don't worry about it. I have I've done all of them, but I'm gonna do it one more time. So let's start from the eye. Ice is 16 gram. I put over here 16 gram each ice. Pastillage white. Doesn't mean that you cannot do it without uh, without uh, pastillage. You can also use fondant, but it will still a uh, little bit. Uh, needs some time to dry. Maybe you have to do it one day before or you add more icing sugar inside the, inside the fondant. So you make it around like this. Nice and smooth. And then put it on the table surface and use your hand around this cushion area. Pushing down slowly. Make sure that when you're pushing that you see that it's thinner here and then puffing in the middle. Okay, like that. Then after that, remove it. Then you have one side, according to picture here, one side nice and sharp, a little bit sharp, not too much, all right? And the other one a bit more roundish here, roundish here. It's quite important that, you know, you have a kind of shape that quite roundish, but it's got also a special shape. See, something like that, all right? So that is the eye, how I do that. Exactly the other way around, the other eyes. All right, this is done. So it is like already a little bit harder, all right? So now, the fins. This is the fondant, which is 10% ice and sugar inside, a bit more firmer as you see, and this is soft, so. So give it a bit of knit. All right, now, according to my calculation, 160 gram is a tail. So let's do it one more tail so you can see exactly what to do. 184, let's say this is 160. Quite a cylindrical shape, like this. Flatten a little bit. We know that there's gonna be tail touching to the other body part. So this is the kind of like a joining part. We will have another trick how to join it properly. So, okay. Then pushing down, pushing down, pushing down. You see, it's important that I'm not doing something which is uh, like a flat. So this is nice and thick because the tail of the fish is also finishing about in this thickness. And then at the end, towards the end, more thinner. So after that, I'm gonna use my fork. Just like this, turn around. Also give some lines. 
lost the lines, put it back again. All right. One fresh cut. One fresh cut here. Give some smoothing. All right. Now, cut this like this. All right. Just wait. After that, you take some white fondant. Just a small piece. And after that, you roll it like this. You roll it like this. Nice and thin. All right. A little bit of water, just on the table. Holding in the hands. Touch here with the water. First time, join backwards. After that, go the other way around. So instead of putting color end of the end of the tail, so we're gonna just uh, do this uh, fondant around to make the finishing. So that is after that placing inside here. Nicely. So get ready to attach to the fish. All right. Let me do one more of this one, so you understand what I'm talking about. We don't have to do this one because it's quite easy, All right? Easy to understand. So once you know that two of the items, you can do the, all the rest of it. And also each item, I already put some uh, weight, so you can measure exactly what you need to do. It cannot mistakes with the size. Let's say we're doing something like that, all right? Maybe it's a little bit slightly smaller, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Turn around. Again, cut one nice line here. All right. Bit of white. That should be good. Again, some water. Done. Touch here. Push it down. Nicely glued. Alright. You can also use this one if you want. So this one goes inwards. Then after that. Adverts. Don't try to lift up, you have to cut it with a knife first, lift up and place it somewhere, just give a bit of like a motion here. So once you place it on the on the fish, on the Nemo, it's got like a wind effect, right? So uh, let's put uh, together these eye uh, balls, that, which is how does it look like. Okay, now again, I use the hard fondant, orange fondant. Watch this. One ball, another ball, similar size. Doesn't have to be exact same. All right, now. 
Push, push. Nice and flat. Come off. You can also put some uh, kind of uh, plastic sheet on it when you're pushing that. It will be also right, no problem at all. So after that, I have a bit of uh, black color here. So I just put a little bit of water, make it nice and sort of like a watery, not too dark, not too light. Okay, just go around of it like this. Okay, just the shade. Okay, after that, you take some cotton bud, water, and only clean the one part. Just bring back to the normal, original color. Okay. All right, then, we take something to scrape and just go some lines inwards from outside to the center. All what you have to do, don't wait too long, you just do it on the time. All right, done. After that, we take a bit of black. That one has to be exactly the same size. So one here. Just measure that correctly. Not same, so I just do it again. That's correct. Drop it in the middle. This one should drop it in the middle. Right. Find something flat, maybe something like this, flat. Push it down. Don't wait too long. While the fondant is still soft, you have to flatten nicely. Right? Same thing again with the white one. Very small. One dot here. Another dot. There. All right. And push down again. Okay, now we have a cutter, which is the, uh, I guess the most closest one to that size. Make sure it's in the center. Cut. Cut. And after that, you may wait for a while, but you can just cut it off like this. Put on the side, let it dry, make sure that it's nice and round, all right? And then you can place it on the eye again, all right? So at the moment it's quite soft, that's why it moves a little bit, but it's okay. Just leave it, leave it for a while, for a few minutes. After that, you can remove it and place it in the middle of the eye, wherever it's necessary. So now what I have to do, since I show you that how to do all the fins and eyes and everything, so I'm going to now start doing my bits and pieces on the background. So all the coral pieces and different colors and everything. And before I finish, I get back to you and show you how to do it. In terms of underwater scenery, there is so many things different available in different kind of colors and different fingery bits and branchy bits also there in all different colors. So you can be quite creative. Just be, uh, just be, just to, uh, um, imagine something a little bit more out of square and then do some variations. So as I did, and this is all actually imaginary also, so I just get some ins inspiration from there and then follow those kind of like uh, fingery corals bits and pieces. I do. All right. Now first let's start with the green one, what I do. So I just take a piece of green uh, gum paste. I think an extra uh, tylose inside there because it's quite firm. All right, so just take a piece 
and then leave the center a little bit thicker, and then towards the sides, make it thinner. All right, like that. And just be irregular like this. And I have something like a round uh, kind of indent, kind of uh, pen end. Just do some circles here like this. It could be without circle, just dots. Can be also like that. And after that, you give a little bit of like turns and foldings on the corner, then you're done. So I have already a couple of them. It's very quick to get dry, so we can plex them on top of each other, become nice. So these guys, also very easy. Just do that, roll it, quite thin. Like that, all right. Then use a piece of cutter like this. Now with one piece, you can just cut nice big long leaf like that, all right? And after that, use the scissor and use only this part of the scissor, not the end bit, and just go like small cuts. Not complete cut, just cutting a little bit and go back again, cut again. Like that, and then turn around. Like that. And then before it's completely hardened, just give it a bit of motion like this. There we go. If you want, you can also give some line in the middle. Okay, like that, it's nice. So, that's the green bits. Where's my back? Here. I have to know that the gram that I let you know how much I use. All right, let's do this purple one. Very easy, piece like this. Portion them just like olive size and push it down. I like to get something like that, side by side, like that, quite flat at the top. Like that. Okay. It's pink stuff. Also portion them. That's like a little bit smaller than olive size. All right. And do the same thing, like we did the purple one, a bit more thinner. Place over here sideways. And then your next one, stick together. Like that. All what we want to do, just like 180 degrees fan. Pretty quick. Okay, no need to rest. Let it dry. Okay, let me show you how I did this stuff, the blue one. I'm gonna do the orange one now. This is the orange uh, with the defense, it extra icy sugar inside. Okay, knife. When I do this, 
this part not touching down. If I do that, it's wrong. So I'm not going to cut like that. I'm just going to cut like this. So you see that it's not cutting here. enough then just uh, joining like this and squish it like that give a bit of motion like that yep all right so we can always cut this bit to make it flat and sitting on the ground so everything is there uh, this one uh, I just roll that uh, coffee color one, the also gun paste, and then give some lines with the with a fork, with a fork, and after that I give some lines in between, in between, and also uh, let me show you, let me show you, it's better. Give some space here. All right, that should be enough. I will use that one for the inscription. Okay, a little bit of oil. Just like this. So this is a wood grain, but there's a stripe of wood joining together into that uh, kind of platform. So that's why I put more lines in between. And after that, I cut this, I cut that. And after that, I'm just gonna cut a little bit the end bits. This much, all right. And then cut this like this, cut this like that. And then remove that like this, cut like that. It's not really equally cut everywhere. It has to be like, like zigzagging like this. And then this one too. One, two, three, four, and five. Cut, cut, shorter, longer, and longer, maybe one more, shorter. All right, so after that, you just cut one here, one there, maybe one more, one more here and slightly separate them like this, gives a kind of like rustic look, all right? So this one we can use for the next character. Now, at this stage, what we have, all the bits and pieces that we can decorate the ground, all right? And we have the cake in, or in the fridge, nice and resting, getting cool and firmer. And then my fondant is ready to roll. All my things are already done, it's getting dry. So I have two choices now. I can just continue now doing everything's finished, or I can wait till tomorrow. Let everything is nice and dry. So I can lift that now, this one, but it's still a little bit moving. But till tomorrow will be everything nice, securely, everything I can lift up, everything can stand standing up like this, all right? Even that this, uh, this platform, even that is moving like this, but tomorrow I can just standing up like this, I can make it like slanting like that. So I will choose to wait till tomorrow and I, can, I will have a lot more comfortable uh, time for assembly, all right? So let's do that. Hello again. We're going to start today by just coating the cake right away. So this cake is already taken out of the fridge about 10 minutes ago. So it's built up some condens condensation on it. So that will help to stick the fondant on the surface. But if it's not it's wet enough, I will still uh, use my uh, atomizer and spray some more water on it. So first thing is we make sure that we give a very good knead to the fondant, so the fondant become a nice and elastic. So how you measure that? Keep kneading, keep kneading. As you uh, take the fondant from the plastic bag out, you will not have this kind of nice, good stretch. So more you kneading, it becomes better. But uh, at the same time, we have to also worry about it. 
do not over uh, knead the fondant, otherwise will be friction will heat up the fat inside the fondant too much and it will change the structure a little bit, uh, not nicer. All right. So let's check one more time. That's a good stretch. So I'm going to start rolling the fondant now. Before I do that, just put a little bit of spray water on the surface. Just make sure that fondant nicely sticks on the surface. At the same time, when you do that, make sure that uh, the base is dry because I want that fondant slip into the deeper area here, not stuck on the surface with the water. All right, make some space over here and start rolling the fondant. Get a bit more neat. Okay, at the same time, my uh, roller, my plastic knife, and my pizza cutter, and starch, and pocket needles are available to use. Start a bit more uh, starch at the beginning, and then try not to put more later on. My aim is to achieve about four millimeters. Maximum four, minimum three. Look what I'm doing, just gliding the roller on the surface, not any more pushing, not more rolling. You see it opens very nicely. Almost there. Let's go. Work it out from top to down. Do not try to push right away. So you have to be like circling around, make sure that surface is correct and then go gradually down. And also like what's important is like using this part of your hand and circling, like nice massaging. And then to not try to give some lines with your uh, fingernails, slowly. So this hand is organizing the skirt and this hand is pushing the fondant on the surface properly.
we are done. Okay, now I have to bring my fondant leveler. Now I'm going to start pushing my plastic knife at the lower part, but I'm not trying to cut it right away. I'm just pushing level by level, so just a little bit by little bit, going really into the zero at the base. All right. Almost there, we can cut already. All right. Nice. Beautiful. All right, now that is ready. We have to now bring the base and then do some work on it. Okay, now I'm going to roll my dark blue fondant, add a little bit of white inside first, and then get some sort of wavy texture, and then I'm gonna place it on this board to represent a sort of seabed. Okay. Okay, a bit of water. As you realize, there is some uh, double sided tape inside here.
to secure that uh, cell phone sheet on top of the velvet cloth. So when we remove that side piece, it's not going to move around, right? So, just put it there, nicely, all right. And take some aluminum foil, and now do some pushes. It. Now what I like to do, I'm going to take my pellet knife, push it underneath, nicely separate from the board and placing on the diagonal shape over here. Okay, take a small knife or medium size, just go slightly underneath. Do not go all the way together, just a, just a surrounding of it, just around of it. All right. And then every time you do that, clean your knife. All right, okay, shall I go from the nose or from the tail? I think I go from the tail. All right, I want to have it here like this, nose this way. Okay, the tail like this. Gonna go a little bit more front. Like that. That's good. Just check that everything's still okay underneath. Looking good. So I'm gonna clean up now and then bring all the bits and pieces, what we did yesterday. And after that, we're adding one after another. Everything what I need is on the table. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, when the pasteurized ice is completely dry, I can push this hard, uh, rock hard uh, ice into the soft fondant and then get really indentation and sink it inside the body. So this is what I like to do. As you see already, I already push it in the right position. I'm gonna show you one more time again. I just put my hand in there and then push it in like this. It will stay, but it's not gonna stable, so I have to glue it with some white chocolate. So pushing inside here, as you see over here, that is, that is wonderfully uh, sitting perfectly all right. So what I do now, I'm gonna take a little bit of, a little bit of uh, chocolate, just a little bit to make sure that it's holding. Yes. Already there. Now, secondly, I see that over here, around the eyes, there is some line. So, sort of like eyelids. So, I'm going to give this indentation here to make it a little bit more uh, realistic according to the the cartoon. That's it. Perfect, all right. Second thing what I like to do, I'm gonna add the tail. So the tail has to be here. I like to have a little bit of gap underneath, and it's, as you see, it's not sitting properly, but I can push a little bit, and I, I can at the same time also cut a little bit here. Just make sure that it's 
fits exactly as possible, as good as possible, so we have a little bit less work for joining together in the right way. All right. Let's see what happened now. I am quite happy with this one now. So what I like to do, I'm going to put a little bit also chocolate here and glue it. I'm not worried about too much of uh, if the chocolate is just oozing out because we're going to use more for none to cover that area. All right? And make sure that this holds properly. This is cold spray to get the chocolate as quick as possible hardened so things are holding in place. That's it. Now, logically, what we should do next, we should just get these white stripes also done. So we don't, because we're gonna put the fins on top of the white stripes, so it's not gonna be in the way. So I like to fix this corner first. down here. Let me put this on the side. I just roll a bit of uh, white fondant to make the white stripes. It's better to do it earlier. It gets a little bit set, a bit firmer, so when we lift up it doesn't tear off. Right? So, just do that. Thin stripes. A bit of water here. Pretty good. Yes. Yeah, so far so good. That's good. All right. Let's do the white stripes now. So, one comes in the front here. Let's see how big it has to be. Hmm, 
that is just right. This one has to cut a little bit, like that. centralized nice good now second one second stripe is bigger It has to be something like bigger here and thinner here a little bit, like this. All right. Pretty much at the middle of the body here. stripe is the where the tail is meeting with the body here right so I think we'll be around something like this all right All right, this is done. Now, I like to do the teeth. All right. 
check. Yeah, that looks good. But what I like to do, I'm going to put some cut here like this. All right, that's ready to go. And I like to you know, do some black color inside the mouth. Looks good. Now I'm going to just make some space and then start putting all the black lines around. Okay, all the black lines are almost finished. I just want to do the last bit with you. So what I'm using is the gel colors with dilution with the water. Just makes it like a easy to run with the brush. Otherwise just gel color will be uh, too sticky. All right. Very fine, nice brush, sharp tip. And then don't try to make it completely straight because these lines on Nemo is a bit of left and right, a bit of wiggly. What I also did just now, I used that uh, phone line leveler and then push it on top of this uh, white line to make it same level. Works out quite nice. Yes, a little bit more. That's it. Now I'm going to look at that. How do we get this all the other fins on it? So this one stays over here on the side, a little bit more uh, towards me. Uh, okay, just to make it a nice join. I'm just going to chop this a little bit up. So I have a bit more bigger joining area. Okay, position wise, just behind the cheek here. Like that, very small dot of white chocolate. Stand by with the cold spray, touch down, don't move anymore, and cold spray. It's standing. Right. 
So next one is the other side, other fin. You have to be careful that because there's no white line on this, only black line at the end. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit. After that, I'm going to use that. Uh, this one a bit heavy just to hang in the hair. I'm going to touch down one corner and then just put it over here like this. Right? Let's see how it looks like. Like that. Maybe more. Good. All right, the top. This one comes here, just like this. I'm gonna cut this one a little bit off because it was too much overshot this area. Yes. So it looks like that looks not bad. A little bit more. That's good. That is pretty. All right, our Nemo is really life. So what will happen now? I'm going to use a little bit of also soft uh, orange fondant and then cover this area and cover that area very fine a little bit and then after that I'm going to also brush that other black parts then we will be finished. I'll show you while I was doing it. So uh, just do the last bit of uh, black lines on the upper fin. So I put over here one black line without white and also a little bit of black here without white and then uh, this line has to join to that back of that fin, like that. Yep. Okay, now, what will happen now is we have to get all those things that we're having here uh, all on the, on the board. So what we're having here, as you have remember, we have some uh, flat pieces which are going to be somewhere around here. We have some uh, finger corals probably on the beh behind. I also have here is the uh, 
Yenner's Way uh, sugar corals. So what I do, I just take a pastillage and then put in, uh, uh, adding some more icing sugar inside, and then I put them in small pieces into microwave, and then just boil it in the microwave. It crystallizes and then getting hardened as soon as I take it out from the microwave, and I can just break them into pieces like this. It's a very light and very useful uh, component that as a filler. So please check this recipe uh, as a uh, Yenner's uh, sugar corals. Um, so I'm going to place all those things now slowly on it and then halfway through I will get back to you. Okay, let's put things together now. I'm using white chocolate and sometimes dark chocolate to glue things together. Those green flat pieces, I want to put some, uh, some lift in between, so there is some air in, in between, it looks much nicer than that. Just to put it on the ground. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, there's one more piece over here. I like to put it over here like this. That's it. Let's see what we can do. So I have here a couple of those those uh, green, uh, uh, let's say, plants or something, seeds. So because those stuff is so light, I can just pop it in anywhere, and it, it will stay. All right. So I would like to use that opportunity to make this green uh, bits is like a bit more higher. Just pocket a little bit of chocolate here, and then put. Whatever you think is looks nice. Right. I think that will be good here. Like that. Right. I like to wait for a while, that's everything is nice and dry. In the meantime, uh, I like to place this one in the front to make the inscription. All right. Okay. Now, uh, Mm-hmm. 
That looks nice. That in. Okay, let's check this one. What's going on here? All right. Good. That should be more than enough. So <clears throat> I like to put this orange bits. Um, where did I put that? <clears throat> Here, behind. Okay, I'd like to do this one here. One like this. That. Like that. In between and one more in between look at that like a flower Okay, there's a couple of them left.
last bits. There's a very strong color here that this is like a, the burgundy color. I want to just skate it around just a little little uh, pieces, maybe just a triple. One, two, three here, and then maybe three here. There. One more here. That's it. So all what we have to do now. Uh, oops, one more. That's good. So when I look at here, I can see that green background is not really uh, covered by the fish. So that is already looking good. And this is place for the uh, inscription. So what I like to do now, we have put that cellophane sheet for protect, protecting the board that when we doing all the chocolate and everything, so there's no stains. Now is everything finished, we can already remove that thing. Right. Just find the beginning part. And then it. Just remove the, first of all, the, the frame. After this happened, what I do, I just cut one piece and after that starts already tearing off. Yeah. Just tearing off. It will just tear from the spot that which is the all the decorations are finished. Okay, it's all done. So let me just clear up around before I tell you a couple of final words. So let me turn the piece 360 degrees. You can see what's happening a little bit more closer. All right. With this, all those ornaments, what I place it on the board is representing the seabed kind of uh, scenery. Uh, Yenner's way of doing how to make a three-dimensional Nemo cake uh, is now finished as a tutorial. So I hope that you find at least a few ideas new and useful for yourself. And the recipes which I didn't mention, uh, I mentioned but I didn't really tell you exactly what's the recipe. So the mud cake, ganache, and then also like uh, the corals, you know, it's corals and everything. So that is all available in the recipe section. Please refer to that. And also, please do not forget to subscribe so we can give you some notification and letting you exactly what's happening in Yenna's way, what is new and what's coming up, everything. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, and associating yourself with us. God bless you all. Till to the next one. Bye for now.